Jane Hunt. Thank you, uh, Dame Eleanor. Thank you very much for an excellent speech by uh, my East Midlands colleague, my honourable friend for North East Derbyshire, who made some very important points, um, particularly about outputs and the, the very need for, for the specific um, health care that's needed um, and the support of that um, across the, the NHS. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak on the proposed amendments to the NHS funding bill, a fund that is, is administered by NHS England. I speak to the amendments of 1, 2 and 3. This bill guarantees funding on a long-term basis to implement the NHS long-term plan. It commits the Government to a £33.9 billion increase for the NHS by 2023-24, bringing the total spend to £148.5 billion. It also provides certainty through a double lock agreement, which places a legal duty on both the Secretary and the Treasury to uphold this level of funding as a minimum over the next four years. Dame Eleanor, we are putting our money where our mouth is. Our manifesto clearly stated that within the first three months of our new term, we will enshrine in law our fully funded long-term plan. Since our success in December, we have consistently put forward and agreed steps to meet the commitments in our manifesto. We are delivering on the promises we have made. One of the most important aspects of the NHS long-term plan is its approach to mental health. It is crucial that people have access to mental health services where and when they need it. I, therefore, welcome the plan commits to ensuring that mental health receives a growing share of the NHS budget worth at least a further £2.3 billion a year by 2023-24 in real terms. This will enable further service expansion and faster access to community and crisis mental health services for both adults and particularly children and young people. Given that many people living with mental health issues may need to access health services more often, the NHS long-term plan also allows for better and more consistent working between all parts of health, care and voluntary elements of the sector. As we have seen in West Leicestershire, for example, primary care networks have formed, grouping GPs and other partners together to the benefit of their patients. As NHS England sets out, Primary care networks build on the, the core of current primary care services and enable greater provision of proactive, personalised, coordinated and more integrated health and social care. Clinicians describe this as a change from reactively providing um, appointments to proactively care for the people and the communities they serve. Linking this local working together with the benefit and knowledge of vanguard projects from across the country and giving experienced local trust leaders who have a deep understanding of the physical and mental health needs of their local area, the freedom to make um, appropriate funding decisions will improve the overall experience of the patient and provide better health and lifestyle outcomes. This is something to be welcomed and celebrated and I ask my fellow colleagues to support this bill and turn down the amendments today. Thank you. Yeah.